All right, let's uh, do this. Okay, so case number uh, one. What do you think about this mass right here? Well, first of all, what's the, let's see, what's the history? The history is a 15-year-old female with an anterior thigh mass. So what did you think about this? Uh, so one of the things that I noticed was uh, the thick fiber septi. Yeah. Providing this uh, mass. And then within the mass, uh, you see uh, almost this uh, alveolar, what I would say an alveolar pattern. Sure. Um, and then you uh, see the polymorphism of the cells. Um, and they're kind of arranged in, um, as I said before, the alveolar part um, pattern. And divided by the septi, uh, eosinophilic cytoplasm. Yeah. And the nuclei. Let's see if we can get in to see the nuclei here. There we go. They have some permanent nucleoli. Yes, they um, do. And this slight polymorphism of the nuclei themselves. Uh, some of them can be uh, purposely located, it looks. Yeah, a little bit, huh? They get kind of a, kind of that almost rhabdoid or plasmacytoid kind of look with pink cytoplasm, right. sure. All right, so what did you, uh, what's, what's your diagnosis or your differential here? Uh, so I believe this is an alveolar soft part sarcoma. Very good. That's exactly what it is. Excellent work. And let's see, what were the questions we asked? Okay, do you know what the molecular abnormality is? Uh, Translocation of X17. Yeah, exactly, and involving the TFE3 gene, okay? So TFE3 is, um, is going to be positive in the nuclei of these cells usually. Uh, and there are a variety of other things, including some of the... I think the XP11 uh, renal cell carcinomas, some solid pseudopapillary tumors, so the pancreas, if I recall, and a subset of epithelial to endotheliomas. And I think there's one or two other things that I'm blanking on, and surely eventually there'll be more. But TFE3 is not totally specific, but it's a pretty good marker here. Although this is a really distinct looking neoplasm, right? I mean, it's a very, not much else looks quite like that. I think the main differential in my book would be like a metastatic renal cell carcinoma because there are some renal cell carcinomas that can look kind of like this, and I'm not a GU pathologist, but to my eye at least. So I think that's a, a good thing to keep in mind. And um, how did you know it wasn't uh, alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma? Because a lot of times people get those two confused, but they actually look quite different. I uh, didn't see the wreath cells. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, you have multinucleation uh, wreath cells, good, in alveolar rhabdo. And I think the way I think these tumors, alveolar soft part sarcoma, is a big pink cells, right? Pink right. or clear. And alveolar rhabdo is a round blue cell tumor, right? It's like cellular round blue cells. It does make kind of that similar architecture, but that's really where the similarities kind of end. And, um, you know, see the intervening vessels can be kind of prominent, just like you'd have in a renal cell. So you can certainly do, you know, keratin, PAX8, something like that. This In this case, it's a 15-year-old, right? So that's pretty unlikely to be a renal cell. And one other thing I really like to point out about this tumor, and this is a really particularly good example of it, and this was taught to me by my mentor, Mark Edgar, who I worked with when I was in fellowship. Uh, Mark Edgar and Sharon Weiss were both my, my mentors and taught me a lot of great stuff. But one thing I really liked, Mark, he had, uh, Mark has a lot of these little visual clues that are kind of, uh, kind of funny and cool, and they really resonate with me. Like He's like, oh, these cells look kind of like a, an apple that someone took a bite out of. See how it's got little notches in the nuclei? See all these little cells, or kind of like a Pac-Man or something, right? They have these little divots or notches or kind of crinkled edges to the nuclei, and that's not always there, but it's often present in alveolar soft part sarcoma. So I find that a really useful little clue. So kind of a fun visual analogy, but one that's actually diagnostically useful. Um, I think the big nucleoli, like you said, it's a, it's a good feature. They often have large nuclei with big nucleoli. And, you know, these are translocation sarcomas, and the general rule is that translocation sarcomas don't usually have pleomorphism, okay? They usually have uniform monotonous nuclei because all the cells have the same abnormality. But for whatever reason, and I'm not sure why, alveolar soft part sarcoma seems to break that rule. It tends to have some scattered pleomorphism. Uh, I would say most of the cases I've seen did. So that's kind of different than um, a lot of the other translocation uh, sarcomas. The other thing I'll point out while we're here, because this case shows it pretty nicely, let me find the area. Well, maybe here will work. If you just had a biopsy of this, you might really struggle, right? Because that doesn't look alveolar at all. 
it looks like instead little small nests or kind of individual cells or small nests or maybe almost trabeculae of tumor cells with clear to eosinophilic cytoplasm. And, you know, again, you could confuse it with renal cell carcinoma. I also think even though cytologically it looks different, that kind of reminds me of the zell ball and appearance of a paraganglioma a little bit. So you can have areas like this in alveolar soft part sarcoma, like there. And, and sometimes they can be quite prominent where you don't really have any of that alveolar pattern. And those can really give you a hard time. So it's good to keep this in your differential. I think when I think of paraganglioma, I try to make sure I think, oh, could it be, especially if I'm in soft tissue, like in a non-usual site where paragangliomas wouldn't normally occur. Um, I try to always think, oh, you know, keep uh, alveolar soft part and paraganglioma in mind. Although, again, you know, the nuclear features are kind of different between those and immunostains would easily sort it out. But I think this is not on people's radar that alveolar soft part sarcoma looks like this because everyone thinks of only the alveolar uh, pattern for it. So these are really, really rare. I've only seen like, I think I've only diagnosed myself one in practice in eight years. And I've seen you know, a small handful of other ones, but but I mean, I've only rarely encountered them in routine uh, practice, even when I was doing consult cases in my former uh, position. So alveolar soft part sarcoma, they uh, tend to, oh, here's more of that zell ball and kind of look, see that? Kind of solid nests that haven't like fallen apart yet, right? Because that's what happens. The alveolar look is that you get these kind of nests and then they fall apart in the middle and the, the peripheral cells kind of stick to the basic membrane around the edge of the nest or the collagen, excuse me, around the edge of the nest and then, and then the, in the middle, they kind of are free floating a little bit. And so, um, but yeah, that's kind of a, a unique pattern there. So, um, but yes, they do a lot of these will metastasize, unfortunately, um, although they can be kind of slow and take a long time to do that. They do tend to spread. Uh, they can spread to weird sites, like in, in addition to the lungs, they can go to the brain and other unusual sites, which is very strange, very strange and unusual tumor, unfortunately. Um, uh, can be aggressive though. All right, so that was case one. Now,